In this video, I've got five top tips to fix your white background problems. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today I'm talking about white backgrounds. Now, over the years in my small studio, I've used white backgrounds for everything from portraits to still life to product photography. It really is incredibly versatile. And along the way, I learned a few of its pitfalls as well. And that's what I'm gonna help you with today in this video. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're using a vinyl background, a paper background, a material white background, or even a pop-up background of some sort, they are all slightly different versions of white, but that really won't matter in this video because the techniques I'm gonna show you will work on all of them. So, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So you've got a white background of whatever type. I'm using a Lasterlite highlight here. And you think, okay, well, I've got a white background. I've got a great model like Brian, who's gonna help me out with this video. Surely if I just take a picture, that background will come out white. Well, let's see, I've got my little speed light up here. I've got Brian sat just a little way from the background and I take the shot. And what I get is well, it's definitely not white. It's a really, really dark gray background. Brian's correctly exposed because I've set the lights before we started, but that background isn't white. Now that's happening because of the inverse square law. And you can find out more about that over on the Adorama Learning Center. Let's get Brian closer to the background. So if you want to hop up and move your chair right up against the background, I'll need to move the lights so that we have a similar distance between light and subject. And I take the same shot again. Here we go. Now this time I get a lighter background, but it's definitely not white. So if you want your backgrounds to come out really white, you need to light them. And in this case, that means adding an extra light. Actually, it means adding extra two lights. I've got one already in the highlight on that side, and I'm gonna add a second streak light 360 over onto this side. Now, depending on your lighting setup and your background, you may have your light set completely differently. They may be coming in from the side and use flags or barn doors. There are so many ways that you could actually light a white background, but without light, you won't get that pure white background that you're after. Okay, I've already metered this out. Let's take a shot, see how it looks. And as you can see, that white background is really, really white. Adding those lights in made a massive difference and allowed us to get the pure white that we're after. So you've got your background lights in place and you take a picture. Well, let's do that, see what happens. Here we go. And as you can see, things aren't quite as good as they should be. In fact, the picture has extremely low contrast and the edges of Brian's hair and his body, they're, they're all burnt out. Well, you've got to think about this as being two separate exposures. You've got exposure from the key light lighting Brian and then the exposure from the light on the background bouncing off the background, hitting the back of Brian and they need to be balanced. Now you could do it by trial and error but I like to use a flash meter because it just speeds the process along. So let's start by metering off the, the key light. That's given me f5.6. And then if I meter off the background, and I do that by getting my flash meter, turning it around so I'm metering the light that's coming off the background, hitting Brian, and I'm getting f11. That's two stops more light on the back of Brian than the front. Now what I need is about the same light front and back. And I can adjust the background lights here using the streak light remote control to get me two stops lower. Okay, let's take a meter reading. We'll just double check. Yep, F5.6, we're good to go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
Getting a pure white background all the way across your image, of course, is the goal with this setup. But things can happen to make that more difficult than you think. For example, let's take a shot like this. Here we go. Now, when I look at that picture, I can see that one side is, well, it's white, and the other side is nearly white. I mean, it's almost white, but it's definitely a hint of grey coming in there. Now, in this case, it's a pretty simple fix. One of the lights has accidentally turned itself off. That happens a lot when you have two lights or more lighting your white background. So it's worth checking that you've got your lights balanced correctly and actually switched on. However, it's also worth noting that it may not be the end of the world, and when we get to post-processing in a couple of steps' time, there is some things you can do there to help. Now, what if you don't have multiple lights? What if you only have one light? Well, if I get my light out from the highlight, if I were shooting Brian with a single light lighting him and a single spare light, I would put it in behind, like that. And then I would take the same shot, but with this one light here. Let's do that. And as you can see, I've got light around the edge of Brian, but the corners of this picture are grey. Does that matter? Well, no, because of course I can fix that in Photoshop really quickly just by painting a bit of white into those corners. The key when you're doing a headshot is to make sure that the areas around your model are white, and if the corners are a little bit grey, well, maybe that doesn't matter so much. Having the floor in your shot is one of those things that sometimes you've just got to do, especially if your subject, like Brian here, is sat on the floor. You've got to have a white floor. But can you get your white floor really white? Do you need your white floor to be really white? Well, at the moment, I've just got the, the vinyl rolled out here. Let's just take a picture and see how it comes out. OK, Brian, here we go. Now when I do that, you can clearly see that's not great. On many reasons, that doesn't work. Even though in the video, the, the vinyl floor probably looks whiter than the highlight, at least it does to my eye here, in the photo, it's completely the reverse. That lit background, much brighter than the floor. So what's the solution? Well, the solution involves a little piece of extra equipment. So the only thing I've changed is the floor, which makes sense because that's the thing I want to be brighter. And what I've done is I've added a clear piece of perspex. Now, you're going to find all sorts of different ways of doing this. I'm just using a very thin piece of perspex. You might be able to find some white, glossy sheeting. Anything that has a reflective surface, a mildly reflective surface, is going to bounce some light from that background off the surface into your camera. I have to thank Zach Aris for showing this tip many years ago and it's something I've used ever since. Okay, let's take the same shot with the perspex in place. Here we go. And when I do that, you can see straight away the difference that makes. Yes, there's still gonna be some Photoshop cleaning up to do, but by and large, that reflection looks really good. Like a lot of photographers, I shoot in RAW format and I edit in either Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw from Photoshop. But when you bring your white background images into the software, you might get a little bit of a surprise. Let's have a look. So here's an image. I know this background is white, but if I hover over it and I read the values on the histogram, they're going to be just down the bottom here. I can see my RGB values are never 100%. I mean, they're close, but at no point is this pure white with 100% R, G, and B. So what's going on? Is this a mistake by the photographer? Um, no, because when I took the picture, I had my camera in the uh, highlight preview mode. So I could see on the LCD that the highlights were blinking away, saying you've blown them out. This is actually what happens with the software. And once you know it's going to happen, it's not a problem. And the fix, well, the fix is really easy. It just uses the histogram and a slider. So if I come down to the histogram, I'm just going to turn on the, the warning here, which has a little white rectangle saying you are now going to see any clipped highlights. Now, to make sure my whites are really white, I'm actually going to come down, not surprisingly, to the whites slider. I'm just going to move it just a little bit to the right hand side and as I do you see how that spreads out and fills that background with white 
just as I was expecting it should be. Now that works really well, it's really quick and it's really simple, but of course what happens if you haven't quite got your background pure white? It didn't quite work. In, in fact, in this case, what about the, the floor, which is not quite white? Well, the solution, again, very simple and very quick. This time it involves using the adjustment brush. So I'm going to get the adjustment brush. I'm going to make sure everything is zeroed. Double click the word effect if it's not. And then I'm just going to change the whites slider. Now, depending how much your, your whites are off, in this case, quite a few of these are quite off. I'm going to just going to max it out for speed. It's going to all the way to maximum. And I'm just going to start painting here. And you'll see that my whites very quickly go white. I can do the other side as well. And we'll get a nice white reflection below like that. There we go. Now, in this case, it works really well because, of course, there's no whites on the model. He's not wearing any white clothing. Uh, he hasn't got blonde hair, for example. Things like that can make this operation a little bit more tricky. If that's the case, you may need to do it inside of Photoshop if you need to fix it, or you can try turning on the auto mask function here inside of Lightroom as well. Okay, so that works really well, but what about the outer areas of this picture? The areas around here where you can see my studio. Now, of course, what we could do is crop this down, but what I'm gonna do is actually come back to the adjustment brush. I'll make a new brush, and this time I'm gonna take the exposure and put it all the way to maximum, plus four. And the highlights, and the shadows, and the whites, and the black, basically everything to maximum other than contrast. And now I can just paint around here. Now the auto mask by the way is turned off, I should point that out, but I can basically overexpose all these areas to get that nice and bright and clean and white and there we go. That works really well. If I've made any little mistakes I can see I have there. Let's just come down here, choose the erase option and we'll just erase that bit back in. There you go and there it is, my beautiful white background image completed. Now at this point it's worth reminding you that there are no rights or wrongs in photography. It's an art form after all. So the mistakes that I've been talking about here can be somebody else's perfect picture. So don't let that put you off. However, if you want a really white background, hopefully you found these tips useful. And of course, if you want to see more tips for myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you need to be clicking on that subscribe button over there. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.